What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the Mojo app for iPhone and iPad and if you could use it to do motion graphics design? Well that is what we are here to talk about today. All right, welcome back to another Can It Design Challenge. Today we're going to be looking at the Mojo app. This challenge comes from user Akash Crispin who commented on the Zinnia challenge to say that we should try out Mojo for motion graphics, saying it was kind of like using After Effects. So we're going to check that out today. I've not looked at Mojo yet, although I have heard of it before and I have seen some other YouTubers use it before. Now one thing I know from having seen it before is that it is a subscription app, which you know on this channel we try to steer clear of recommending subscription apps. So we'll see what the free version can do and whether or not the subscription would actually be worth it. My hunch is that the subscription would only be worth it if you were going to use it a lot. Now one thing that you should note right away is when you look at the Mojo app, it says it's for Instagram stories. So while we're going to be looking at it specifically to see if we can do motion graphics design because it has some features like that, its main purpose appears from the title to be Instagram stories, adding different motion and graphics into your Instagram stories. And if you were doing that a lot, perhaps maybe a subscription would be worth it. I don't know. The folks at Mojo have not reached out to me or sponsored this video in any way. So I'll just be seeing what you see as I look at Mojo for the first time. Let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at Mojo. I'll be using the iPad to make it a little bit easier for you to see, but this is also available on iPhone. All right, so here we are on the iPad and we're just going to hop into the Mojo app. So let's click on, I've never gone into it before, so we're just going to go ahead and take a look at it together. So let's go ahead and hit next. We'll see if it makes us set up an account or anything. Choose from hundreds of animated templates. I'm always a little bit wary of something that seems really, really template based. It's good if you aren't a designer and you really don't want to put in the time to learn to design, but I'm always a little bit wary of things that act like they are primarily meant just to use templates because that just kind of makes things kind of cookie cutter-ish, not as unique, but we'll see what we get here. Okay, tons of impressive text effects. All right, that's cool. And then it says, in which context are you going to use Mojo? I'm not quite sure why they're asking this, but for me, it's just going to be, I mean, it would probably be for YouTube. So I guess I'll just click personal. I'm assuming they'll try and customize templates or features to me for that. I'm not sure. Okay, so down in the bottom right, we can see where it says pro. So I'm assuming that that is where we will find out about the subscription. So let's click on that just so we kind of know what we're working with right off the bat. Okay, we can unlock 300 pro templates and text styles. Plus there's new ones added every month. You can have three days free and then 40 bucks a year after the trial ends. If you just want one month, you can do it for $9.99, so $10. So obviously 12 months is the much better deal. It's 60% off of the month to month price. Looks like there are a bunch of different things. You can do the square format, effects for your logo, add your own fonts in, remove the watermark. So there's looks like we're going to be fairly limited using the free version, but at least we should be able to see a little bit. 40 bucks is not like the most expensive thing in the year, and it sounds like they are adding content. That's one thing that it's important if you are going to be a subscription service is you need to be adding things throughout time so that it is still worth it to pay the money. I still don't love it, but let's go ahead and let's just take a look at what we have here. So there's a lot of templates you can choose from. It looks like we cannot use a blank template, which is really where I wanna be. I just wanna use a blank template, but it looks like it's gonna tell me that's a pro feature, I'm assuming. Well, maybe that's not what the lock means. It's just saying it would like to access my photos. Okay, so we'll allow access to our photos. Maybe it will let us use it, but not export it. If I'm gonna use this to create animations for my YouTube videos, I obviously want to be able to go into a 16 by nine aspect ratio instead of a nine by 16. And I don't really want to have to put my photo behind it right away. But let's just see how this works, okay? So I'll just go ahead and choose an image so we can kind of experiment here. So here's one from the Grand Tetons. It looks like you can insert some stock photos as well. Okay, or stock videos. Let's go to done here and then let's see what happens when we click add. What we want to see is can we create a simple animation? Can it design something like a subscribe animation? Something like that. So let's go ahead and let's add in text and we get a bunch of different options. I'm seeing a lot of locks on here. So I think that is probably pro. It will let you use it, but not export it is my guess. And can we search these? There are some like filters along the top. So you would kind of need to get familiar with what's here and what you wanted to use. And of course, most of them, like I said, look like you have to pay to use them. Okay, I'm just going to try this neon one and it immediately tells me that I can't use it. 
Okay, so let's try one that is free. Try the gradient. And we'll just put subscribe. One thing that we're looking for is being able to customize things. And if everything is really tied into the templates and the pre-made animations, then there really isn't the kind of thing that we as professional designers might want to be able to do to create our own design. So let's go ahead. It says it's gradient, but it looks like it's really kind of like behind it. The gradient's not running across it. Let's just click edit. Nope, that just edits the text. Okay. We can change the style. The style we chose was gradient. Okay, it was being weird. It wasn't showing it that same style, but now it is. So let's try this again. We can drag it around. It has snapping to show us a little bit of where things might be. So we'll just kind of put it in the bottom middle here. One thing I'm not really seeing is a timeline. So let's click back. Oh, nope. Okay, we click off and then we get the ability to add more. Let's see what the paintbrush does. The paintbrush allows us to edit the photo, I think. So this 1.8 to 60 seconds. Okay, there's the text. So it looks like we can choose where the text is displaying. Okay, so we can have the picture show up, then the text. I'm not seeing the ability to really animate the text yet, but that must be somewhere in here. Maybe that's only built into the style. So let's try a different style. We just need to find a free, okay, we'll try this one. Doesn't look like there's a way to play through it. Oh, I guess it plays through it when we go back. Okay, there it is. And if we edit the timing, we can change how long it stays on. Let's add in a graphic and see what we have here. So there are stickers logos which we cannot do because we aren't paying for it there are gifts from giphy okay so for us let's pick this hand so we can kind of point to our subscribe button let's see if we can get it to come in a little bit after okay okay so let's position it down here and we'll adjust our timing a little bit more that we're coming in after the subscribe. Okay, so we can create something that looks like that. Now again, we aren't going to actually be able to save this because it is a premium thing. So let's see, page. Okay, so this would allow us to create multiple pages for our story. And really, if I'm doing this as a designer, what I want to be able to use are just some basic shapes. I wanna really be able to work with something and create something on my own. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here. There is a circle here. So clicking on the eye will actually let us watch the animation. Okay, that's good to know. I'm not sure where that circle went. There it is. One thing that I'm looking for is if there's a way to arrange them. And it looks like the option send to back will send it all the way to the back. I don't see anything more sophisticated than that. So it doesn't look like there's a layers panel. So it looks like it's pretty much going to be send to back and you'll have to arrange everything by choosing send to back. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the hand and use this little circle to highlight the subscribe instead. I want to make it bigger. So it looks like a pinch out. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Let's adjust the timing a little bit here. Looks like all timing is done by seconds, not by frames, which is kind of what you would expect from something that's just aimed at maybe people who don't know what they're doing. But if we're really trying to work in motion graphics, you really want to be able to get down to the frame. And I know it probably sounds a little unfair here because this is made for Instagram stories. It's not made for motion graphics editing, but that was the suggested use case was to see if it would work for motion graphics. And so that's what we're looking at right now. And we've tried out some other apps for motion graphics editing before. So far, really Keynote has been the best motion graphics editor on the iPad outside of doing things inside of 
LumaFusion itself. LumaFusion is limited in some ways, which is why I've been doing a lot more in Keynote too and kind of combining them together to try and get the best out of it. But the truth is there just isn't much for motion graphics right now. So depending on what you need, this might be good enough. But let's keep looking here. Looks like we can add a shadow. Let's just watch what that looks like. I didn't really notice anything with the shadow, so it might not really matter on something like the circle. When I'm in color, I oh, there we go. An eyedropper is what I was looking for. Let's click on the eyedropper. I can't select from the picture. So the eyedropper is just looking at the scale. Okay, so that's not, in fact, super helpful. <laughs> well, I was excited about having an eyedropper there for a second, but it looks like that's not going to be the case. Looks like that's about as good as we're probably going to do there. So I think we've looked at all the options now. I just want to look a little bit more through the graphics, stickers, basically, and see if there's anything else that would be useful. So a lot of like hand drawing kind of ideas. It looks like these are things that you could add your own media to. Some arrows, call outs, okay, and some call to actions. Okay, so let's just see. When I click save, what's it going to tell me? It's going to say you have to pay. I don't want to pay, so I'm not going to save that. And now it's trying to get me to share with somebody else. Cancel. Okay, there is an undo button. If we undo, can we redo? Yes. There is the option to duplicate. Slight timing options. We're going to click back. We're going to confirm not to save that. Now part of the issue here is in order to do this, we really need these things to be flipped. And I don't see any way to flip it. It looks like everything, here's some landscapes. Okay, but all landscape ones, are locked. So I don't think I could create anything for YouTube at all inside of here without paying. It would be pretty much pay or not use this for YouTube. There are a lot of different templates for sure. Most of them obviously are paid for. And again, I just want to reemphasize, I do think that developers should be paid for their work. I just think that they should give single purchase options. They can be expensive. If you work hard on something and it is a good product, then it's fine to charge for it. I just think that subscriptions are not the best way to go about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's try something that we could actually export. I wanna see if we can get things exported out of here. That's always part of the challenge inside of one of these design challenges is what can you export as? Can you produce something in the app that you can actually use in a real scenario? So in order to get to the save point, we're going to have to open up one of these free options. So let's go here. Okay, and you can see it says made with Mojo app along the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go get the picture again that we had here. So we've got kind of a Polaroid effect, I guess. Let's see if we have all the options that we had before. Okay. So we do seem to have the same options here. Let's click on this and let's edit it. We can change the size, I guess, with this slider. Try and get it on one line there. Adjust the placement a little bit. Well, let me delete this. <laughs> it did let me delete it, but I'm assuming it will add it back in on the export. Okay, so let's adjust the timing on that. There isn't a lot of customization, obviously, but let's keep going here and see what we can do to get this actually out of the app. Let's click Save. Okay, and inside of Save, we have the option to go directly to Instagram, which obviously is the point. We have the option to save a video. We have the option to share a link on the web, use later, which is a program to use on Instagram to try and schedule your stuff out. Here's a link to a draft. I assume that's so that other people could approve it or share as an image. I'm just going to click save as video here. So one thing that there doesn't appear to be here is the option to export video with transparency. And maybe that's a pro feature. I don't know. We can go back and we can look at it again. But if you can't do transparency, that makes it really difficult to actually use it as a motion graphics editor. The way that we get around this in something like Keynote is doing something as either a green screen or a white screen and then using a key to actually take that out. And I have a whole course on doing that in Keynote along with LumaFusion and I'll link to that in the description of this video. But it doesn't look like there would be much of a way to do that in this scenario. And of course, because this is aimed at Instagram, it is highly dependent upon like pictures or videos or other 
media that you'd be bringing in. And so it's not all that helpful from a perspective of creating motion graphics for videos that you're going to use someplace else. So unfortunately, there isn't a lot here. This definitely is not going to replace After Effects for you. Unless, of course, you were literally only using After Effects to create some pretty simple text animations or some pretty simple graphic animations for like your stories on your Instagram. That doesn't mean that this is a bad app. It just means it's not a motion graphic designer. It is what it says it is, which is an Instagram stories creator using templates. That's what it's supposed to be. And of course, if you have to do that a lot, you could save a lot of time. If you're creating dozens of Instagram stories every day, you could save yourself a lot of time and add some more dynamic feels to it using this app. It's just not going to be something that I'm going to use. I don't create a lot of Instagram stories and I don't love things that are template based because I'm a designer. I want to be able to create my own designs here. So that's a look at Mojo here on the iPad. Unless you're doing a lot of Instagram stories, it's probably not worth $40 a year. And if you don't pay for it, there is not much you can do with it. It's pretty limited. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the category of it cannot design. Remember, if you have apps or scenarios that you'd like me to try out in these Canon Design Challenges, go ahead and leave those on the comments on any of these videos, and I'll be happy to put those into a future video. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments if you've used the Mojo app and how you've used it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.